Hello everyone, and welcome back to Triple Crown Wargaming, where you join me, the Lore Master, where once again I'm going to be discussing another one of the Old World Almanacs from Warhammer Community. And this one is all about the shooting phase. So, as a collector with quite the vast shooting um, array of shooting armies and units, if you like, I've got my dwarves, uh, I've got handgunners for the Empire, although you've not seen them on the channel because they're not painted yet, um, I've got my wood elf army, lots of shooting there, plenty of bows in my high elf list, including those cheeky sisters of Avalon, um, I've also got my dwarves, uh, my tomb kings, I think I might have said dwarves at the start, I don't know. Lots, plenty of shooting available to me, so I'm quite excited to see what this phase might have in store. So, um, running through the article, uh, there's quite a lot of stuff that I think is going to put a lot of classic Warhammer players at ease here. Uh, and in fact, I've had quite a few messages on social media this afternoon of people just saying, oh, this is the best one yet of one of these almanacs, because I feel so much more confident about how this game is going to be reading this one. Which is great. So the shooting phase will be broken into four um, steps. Declare targets, roll to hit, roll to wound, remove casualties. Now when I first read this, I was like, ooh, this could be interesting. So do I declare all of my targets? So I just say this unit's going to shoot that, this unit's going to shoot that, this unit's going to shoot that. Or is it one at a time? Now, reading on through the article, it says first pick a unit and declare its target. Um, a unit can shoot only if it has a ranged weapon, hasn't marched or charged, and isn't fleeing or in combat. To shoot, the model must have line of sight to its target, um, and you can't split fire. So, um, not every member of the unit can uh, let loose in some cases. Models can only shoot once, no matter how many attacks they have on their profile. So, nothing too um, exciting or over-imaginative there. Very kind of classically Warhammer. Um, big question for me over line of sight. Um, are we going to keep true line of sight that we had in 8th edition, or are we going to go back to kind of unit heights like we had in other uh, editions of the game? Now, that will be really interesting to see. I Oh, I'm also, sorry everyone, I'm going to try very hard to say interesting a bit less during this video. So, I'm not sure is the sort of short answer, but my gut instinct says... I think that there'll be possibly be an article, an almanac specifically on that. So we might just have to wait and see. Um, I quite like the idea of True Line of Sight staying. And one of the reasons is because I just think it's really easy, um, for particularly for new players. But we just don't know, do we, at this point? And um, I can't say that I'm... You know, it's not going to be a deal breaker for me if we don't have it, is what I'm saying. If we have sort of heights coming back. Now, some things here that I really like the uh, the sound of. Um, High Elf Mage manifesting a fiery convocation. That bad boy is back. I can't imagine it's going to be anywhere near as good as it is in 8th edition Fantasy Battles. Because it is wildly good in 8th. But it's great to see that the kind of there's a continuity there. Um, as a High Elf general, I kind of I want to see Banner of the World Dragon in. But I don't, I'm not saying it, it should be as it is now. It was very different in the previous book. And it, it should be very different, I think, because it is too way too good as it is now. So it needs to be different. But what I'm saying is I want to see an item called the Band of the World Dragon still in the game. Because it's kind of got that nostalgia, that history, that classic. So seeing things like Fiery Convocation there for me is exactly that same feeling. I want to see it in, which is great. So the longbow is one of the items that they show off in this video. And I have to say, I'm really, really pleased to see this. Um, first and foremost, it's got this armor bane rule, which seems that it will, may, to me, suggests that it will replace armor piercing, perhaps. So not one off the armor save, which is great. Because the difference currently between an Azurai longbow and a regular longbow is night and day. The Azurai ones are so much better because of that minus one. And I, I really think that they needed that across the board to make the longbow scary again. And if I think about the last article, charge ranges are coming down. Um, nice big 30-inch range on these longbows. Bit of armor bane. Shooting could, for quite a lot of armies, feel really dangerous again. Um, and you know what? That's great because it has struggled in the current set of rules to really stamp its place on the meta game. So I quite like that. Um, Screaming Skull Catapult's also on here, again, just appealing to me. Elves and Tomb Kings in the same box, beautiful. Um, 
So not a huge volume of change here. There is a minus one AP. So it appears that this AP thing, this armor penetrative value, is going to have um, real importance in the old world. And I guess that that makes me question. It's a big question now, but my strength eight under the hull, yeah, on the screaming skull, but only minus three to the save. Now currently, strength eight would be minus five to your save. Is that right? Yes. So. My gut instinct here, guys, is saying that this could be a big hot take, but this looks to me like strength is no longer going to affect saving throws. Because you wouldn't have an AP value if it did. Unless you're saying that's added to the, the AP from the strength, which doesn't make any sense, because when are you going to need minus 8 armor save? So I think this article is telling us that strength no longer affects the armor penetrative value of your attack that is a huge change for warhammer fantasy battles but not necessarily a dreadful one because it potentially allows for some nice options in terms of saying well you know being clubbed by a strength eight flipper on something like a glockkin for example um is that as penetrative as a rending strength seven claw from a dragon i don't know i'd argue probably not i mean my armor's probably going to be better value. I'm probably still going to be crushed to death either way. But, you know, there's potential in there for something that's a little bit more interesting, which I really like. Um, now, they do mention that models can only shoot once, no matter how many attacks they have. And unless they have volley fire um, or, a, or are stationed on a hill, only the front rank may fire. So this is a big change. It's a step back towards your 6th and 7th edition games where being on a hill added to the number of ranks you fired in and you would only fire in one rank. Um, now, I expect that bows and longbows will probably have volley fire. I think quite a lot will have this. Um, so this one, I think, is probably more than anything going to hit your handguns, your, um, your kind of black powder shooting, and things like your crossbows. So this could be a big change, but then perhaps they will be more dangerous they might have more armor bane almost certainly have a higher strength so that might be the trade-off um but looking at this makes me think that the kind of 10 man unit could be the way forward with a lot of shooting five by two if it's got volley that is if not then you're probably going to be losing a few shots which is a bit of a shame i have to say uh, i did like firing in two ranks but if it's maintained through volley fire for the vast majority i think i'll probably be able to accept that and it just adds to this general feel that perhaps the number of dice people are throwing are going to come down a bit in this set of rules the game's going to slow up a little bit it's not going to be quite as con uh, carnage as it was in the previous set of rules and this would kind of speak volumes to that in terms of, well, we're reducing the number of dice you're going to throw for shooting. Because volley fire only lets me have the second rank. That's a huge change from 8th, where currently it lets me have more than that. Now, obviously, I don't know if it only lets me have the second rank. I'm just making an assumption based on what I'm reading here. But I would suggest that it's a reasonable assumption in light of what I'm seeing. Um, ballistic skill um, been maintained. I know there's been a lot of people getting really concerned on the internet. Is this going to be a BS3+, plus, BS4+, plus game? Well, the answer is categorically no. So, happy days. You're still going to keep your kind of minus your ballistic skill from a, from 7 mantra, as we all knew it back in the day, to work out your to hit rolls. Interestingly, though, BS6 or higher uh, are going to get a reroll now to hit. Um, and they do mention that negative modifiers are still in. Minus 1 for moving, uh, long range. Um, stand and shoot by the sounds of it, you're, received, you're receiving a charge, that's going to be a modifier. Targets are in cover. So that does make me question some things there. Um, they also mentioned the classics, a natural one's always a miss. Uh, you might be up to 7s and 8s and 9s, so exactly the same mechanic as they are in the current set of Fantasy Battle Rules if you're playing 8 or in earlier ones, where um, you, you go to hit on 7s, that's a 6x4. That's absolutely fine. But the question will be, does that modifier... Turn a 6 plus. So, for example, if I'm BS6 and I'm minus 1 to hit, am I now 2 plus to hit? Am I now 3 plus to hit on the first dice roll and can't re roll because I can't roll 7 plus? Or is it a 6 followed by a 4 on the second roll? I have to say, I think it will be the first, not the 6 followed by a 4 thing. I think that's way too many dice and it just becomes too confusing. But it's interesting. Could be in there. I'm not sure I see it. Um, 
And again, something else that's massively reassuring for so many gamers, the a classic to wound chart is back. Now, it is different to the 8th edition to wound chart, it is worth pointing out. Um, and it's more like the kind of 7th and 6th fed ones. Now, without having those to hand, I can't be certain, but I think it's a little bit kinder than them. I don't remember Strength 3 being able to wound Toughness 8 in earlier editions. I could be mistaken. So if that's the case, this might be a slightly more kind version. But there is a small area in the corner of potential outs where you can't wound. And only Strength 5 and above can wound everything in the game. I don't hate it. It's fine. I think it could open up some really interesting combinations for players. Um, which is great. Um, strength 3 can't wound toughness 9 so there could be some potential there if there's ways to make your models tougher so they also confirm fantastically that armor saves are still in and armor penetration uh, of the weapon will affect that light armor still grants a 6 plus 5 plus of heavy armor um, can shield still improves it barded mount um, uh, and certain spells and magical items so that makes me think potentially things like glycerin robe are still in which is great uh, magic items can still improve your armor save, which is great. Um, big questions there for me would be, how does the shield work now? In earlier editions, it used to give you plus two in combat and plus one outside combat. In eighth edition, it used to give you the parry. I really hope the parry stays. I really like the fact that it makes me roll more dice. And it makes the game continue to feel more interactive. And it's saying there can be a real bit of fun. Or oh, is he going to make the six G6? Um, so... I hope it stays, but I, I, this doesn't really tell me one way or the other. I think the combat arc was probably going to tell me a bit more than that. Um, and then nothing too exciting. You remove your casualties uh, as per wounds. So if they've got two wounds, it's two wounds before you take a model off. And it's a quarter of the models in the unit for a panic test. So it still favours things like ogres where you can lose, um, you've got to lose quite a lot of wounds to actually force the panic check. So... They also talk about some other types of shooting and a plethora of special rules, which I really love. I love the fact that they're looking at this and saying, let's keep it complex, let's go for special rules. Uh, breath weapons, some skirmish cavalry can fire and flee. Love to see what's got that. Really hope that's your kind of classic Illyrian Reaver style cavalry. Um, or maybe even skeleton light horsemen, skeleton, uh, uh, skeleton horse archers rather. That would be really cool. Iron Drake have got Cinder Blast Bombs with Quick Shot. I wonder if that will be a replacement for Quick to Fire currently, or if it will be an entirely new rule. Um, I really like Quick to Fire. The fact that it, particularly the element I like, is the fact that I can always stand and shoot. So I'd like to see that remain in one form or another. So hopefully that's what Quick Shot is doing. Um, it then talks about magic missiles and magical vortexes because we know now that magic is going to be done inside these other phases. So it gives an example of. Fireball. I suppose there's some stuff here that stands out. There doesn't appear to be any way for me to increase the range of Fireball. There doesn't appear for me to be any way to increase the number of hits from the Fireball. So this is much more classic uh, Warhammer than 8th, say, where you had all this ability to keep pushing it up. Um, Magical Vortex is still in. Really cool. This one you drop and it kind of slides around itself. So there's none of this throwing the artillery dice out. This is the Vortex of Chaos. Demonology, interesting. Um, there, so that's obviously some sort of new uh, spell law for chaos, which is really cool. Um, but I have to say, this vortex of chaos is super underwhelming to me. D6 plus one strength, three hits with an AP of dash. <sighs> Doesn't seem great, so it definitely feels a bit like magic is kind of been toned down. I'm never going to get those three and four D6 magic missiles again. Looking at this, I'm never going to see. You know, I haven't got a Vortex here that's really, really dirty. It could be that there's some other really filthy ones, but I just get the feeling that this is probably a general indicator that magic is going to be a little less spicy and a little more, uh, you know, a little more... It will still be impactful, but perhaps not as, as game-changing. One big spell is not going to switch the script of the way the game is going. So that will be interesting. So, overall, said interesting, didn't I? I've been trying so hard. Overall, I quite like what I see. Lots of positives here. Lots of confirmation that things aren't really changing a great deal in the shooting phase. Uh, I can live with the uh, only front rank shooting, particularly if volley fire is going to let me have more, and it seems like it will. Uh, my gut instinct on that volley fire there is that if you move, you won't be able to do it. So I reckon it'll be front row only if you move, front row and second row if you stand still. And maybe front row, second row, third row 
if you're on a hill with volley fire. I wonder if that'll stack. I really hope so. Because that I really like when stuff interacts with the terrain. So that'd be really great if there's an obvious interaction with the terrain there. Um, and something else that we can garner from this as well is that the Vortex is considered to be dangerous terrain. Sorry, I know I'm flitting between a few different things, but I'm just sort of seeing stuff and thinking, ah, interesting. <laughs> I did it again. So um, the Vortex itself is considered to be dangerous terrain. So dangerous terrain staying in one form or another, which is great. It's great to see kind of ideas that have been consistently in that make it feel like Warhammer. Are remaining I love that um, and again just looking back at the screaming skull bombardment I reckon that will probably be something um, using the bombardment special as a three inch template and a stone fire misfire so it's, it's just just seems to be discerning sort of to do with a template uh, flaming attacks magical attacks move or shoot all quite simple things multiple wounds d3 plus one so reduction from d6 to d3 plus one so you're always going to do a little more damage than you could have done on the minimum before but they definitely seem to have paired that back and i wonder if that's uh, a way of saying well look stuff is getting around slower we need it to do less damage on the way in so that the game kind of remains balanced so that's interesting don't know what screaming skulls does wonder if it's going to be similar to what it does uh, currently um, in terms of redu uh, forcing panic checks or reducing leadership for panic. And cumbersome. I wonder what cumbersome is going to be like. I wonder if that will mean it will see a return to kind of earlier versions of the game. Where when you lost artillery crew you couldn't shoot the artillery as often. That could be interesting to see. But I do think that that was maybe more complicated than we ha we needed all the time. Although I do understand why you would say it's very reasonable because it doesn't make a lot of sense that you purchase three crew but can be just as effective with one. So I can see both sides of that argument. Overall, love the longbow change. Really think the big, sh the big stunning change here is the suggestion to me, uh, and I'll assert this quite strongly because I feel like it's it's there for me to take that strength no longer modifies armor saves. That looks like a big change, and I'm pretty confident from reading this that that's what it's going to look like. So, yeah, overall, really good. I can see why people feel so positive about this article, because it does confirm so much of the stuff that we've all loved. I hope you've enjoyed my video today. Um, let us know what you think about this almanac, and indeed, all of the other things that are being released at the moment from Games Workshop. Uh, I know we're going to have, very soon, hopefully, some exciting previews as well. Let's, fingers crossed, for some more really cool models, and see what's coming on there. And make sure you head over to triplecrownwargaming.com where you can become a knight of the realm if you want to as well. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on another old world um, reveal, another reaction to what they're doing really soon. Remember to tag your friends and like, subscribe and share. Then head over to triplecrownwargaming.com and become a knight of the realm today. What, what are you doing mate? Are you alright? Do